Welcome back everyone, Patrick here and moving on to the next video, we have to solve these two limits here using these properties of limits like we've been doing in the previous videos. So notice that these functions here are a little bit more complex than the ones we've done before. So starting with number one, I'm going to erase number two here and I'll write it back when, uh, when we get to it. So we've got the limit as x approaches negative one of negative 3x plus 2 all over 3x squared minus 1. That's all in brackets, and then that's all being squared. So remember, we got to get this expression to be in terms of expressions in this format. So how would we do that? Well, the first thing to notice is notice that we have this big function in a bracket, and then it's squared. So that's the most outer function. And so the first law that we got to use is law number seven, where we have this function to the power of n. And when we use that law, it's like almost like we're taking this limit and distributing it in the bracket. So we would rewrite this as the limit as x approaches negative one of negative three x plus two all over three x squared minus one that's all in brackets, and then that's all going to be squared. So notice that this rational function inside the bracket was like f of x, and now we have the limit as x approaches a, or as x approaches negative 1 in this case, of f of x, and then that exponent now is on the outside. So I'm actually going to use a different color in this video to uh, show which law we use. So for the first one here, we used, uh, let's write it over here, we used law number seven. And now what we gotta do is work with this limit inside the bracket. And notice this is a rational function here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to apply law number four now, where we're gonna distribute that limit to the numerator and the denominator. So we would rewrite this as limit as x approaches negative one of negative three x plus two all over the limit as x approaches negative one of three x squared minus one, close bracket, squared. So there, for this one here, we used law number four. And then we got two limits to work with now, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. So for the numerator, notice that we're taking something and we're adding, so, we're going to be using law number three for both the numerator and denominator actually because now we have 3x squared minus 1 in the denominator too. So we're going to distribute that limit sign to everything else. So we'll have the limit as x approaches negative 1 of negative 3x plus the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 2 all over the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 3x squared minus the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 1. Close bracket, squared, like that. Okay, so uh, over here we applied what? Limit number, or uh, law number 3 for this one. And then let's continue this up here, notice that this first limit, limit as x approaches negative 1 of negative 3x, notice it's a constant times a function, so we could take that constant out using law number 6. So let's actually uh, write it a little bit further up here. Uh, so we got, so we would take that negative 3 out, so we'd have negative 3 limit as x approaches negative 1 of x plus the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 2. All over, same thing here, we could take out that 3, so we'll have 3 limit as x approaches negative 1 of x squared minus limit as x approaches negative 1 of 1. And then this is all squared. Notice that we could have subbed in 2 and 1 for these two because they're already in this format where we have limit as x approaches a of a constant. But I'm just going to leave it for now. In this question, I'm going to get all of the expressions 
first, and then I'm going to sub in all of the, uh, the numbers after at once. So almost done here. Notice that uh, this is in this format. Then we have this in format number one. This is in format number one as well. The only thing that's not in format one or two is this x squared. So what we got to do with this one is apply law number seven again. And actually just to write this down, I forgot here, we use law number six to take those constants out. So here for this x squared, we got to use this law, number seven again. So uh, what would we have? We would have negative three, everything in the numerator is going to stay the same, plus limit as x approaches negative one of two, all over three, what happens here is we're going to have limit as x approaches negative one of x, and then all of that's going to be squared. So this to there, we use law number seven on that. And then this here stays the same, minus limit as x approaches negative one of one, and then this is all squared still. And now notice everything is either in this format or in that format where we have the limit as x approaches the negative one of a constant, like over here and over here, or the limit as x approaches negative one of x that we have here and there. So now we could sub in. So for this one here, that would be negative one. Remember, that's just going to equal that a value, whatever x is approaching, x is approaching negative one in this case. Limit as x approaches negative one of a constant, it's always just equal to that constant, so that would be plus two, all over uh, three negative one squared minus one, and that's going to be squared, like that. I think that's correct. Yeah, it looks good. So we got, uh, this would end up being negative three times negative one is positive three plus two is five over two. That's gonna be squared. And remember, when you're taking a fraction to the power of something, you distribute that power to the numerator and denominator. So five squared, 25, and then two squared is uh, four. So 25 over four is the answer for number one. And you could check it if we do a direct substitution, we would end up getting five over two squared, 25 over four. So that is correct. So that's the answer to number one. And then I forgot to mention from here to here, we use law number one and number two. We use law number one for these, for these constants, and then law number two for these x's over here. 25 over four, that's the answer for number one. And then finally, number two, we got the limit as x approaches three of the square root of x plus two x over three x squared minus two. Now, this one here, it may look a little different initially because of the square root, and then in number one, we had to the power of two, but it's pretty much the same thing because the square root of anything, we can actually rewrite that as to the power of a half. Same thing. And then notice it becomes very similar to that previous one. So the first law we're gonna apply is number seven, where we're gonna distribute that limit symbol into the exponent. So we'll have the limit as x approaches three of x plus two x over three x squared minus two. That's all to the power of a half. And you don't have to write to the power of a half, you could just write, let's say the square root. So it's like we distribute that limit inside the square root. Um, and then from here, so this was law number seven. And then from here, we're going to distribute, so we'll rewrite that square root. We're gonna distribute that limit to the numerator. Limit as x approaches three of x plus two x all over the limit as x approaches three of three x squared minus two. And uh, that was law number four when we distribute to the numerator and the denominator. Then from here, 
in the numerator, we're going to distribute to these two functions. So we'll have the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus limit as x approaches 3 of 2x all over limit as x approaches 3 of 3x squared minus limit as x approaches 3 of 2, like that. So we use this law, number 3, because we are adding and subtracting. So that is number 3. If we continue this up here, we'll have the square root on the outside still. This is already in format number 2, so let's just leave it. So we got the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus this one here we could take the constant out so we'd be using law number six so we'd have two limit as x approaches three of x so this is law number uh, six that we use right here all over notice here we could take out that constant three limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus limit as x approaches 3 of 2. This is already in format 1, but uh, let's just keep it like that for now. So here we use law number 6 on that. Then here, notice we have a function to the power of something, so we're going to apply law number 7. So we'll have the square root. Let's rewrite everything. In the numerator, everything stays the same. Here, we're going to have the limit as x approaches 3 of x. That goes in brackets, and then all of that gets squared. Minus limit as x approaches 3 of 2. And then over here, we applied law number 7 on that. And now, notice everything is in this format and that format. So format number 1, constants, like that. There's a constant alone. And then this, this, and that limit are in format number two. So when we make our substitutions now, this would be three plus two times three again, all over three on the outside. This would be three here, squared minus two, like that. And then we'll have the square root. 3 plus 2 times 3 gives us 9. And then uh, this would be 27 minus 2, which would give us 25. And when we're square rooting a fraction, we could square root the numerator and the denominator, sort of distribute it. So square root of 9, 3, square root of 25, 5. So very similar to number 1. It's kind of like we went backwards, though. Uh, so 3 over 5 is the uh, is the answer and uh, just as a heads up here for this to get that to here we use the law number one and then to get this three this three and then this three we use law number two so three over five is the answer to number two